Okay, so now that we have our resistor measured, we need to build a circuit out of this resistor and go ahead and hook it up to our oscilloscope over here. For our circuit, we just need to put our resistor in series with our inductor. So I'll do that really quick. And we want to apply an AC voltage to our entire circuit from our wave generator, which is this thing right here. I'm going to take this BNC cable as an output, and then we have these uh, wires hooked up to it so that we can go and hook that up to the positive and negative side of our circuit. I'm going to put the negative on the inductor because we're going to want to measure the voltage over the inductor in a second, and the ground is going to be common between the output and the measurement. So to start off for measurement, I want to measure the voltage in that we're putting in there. I'm going to hook up our ground to the same point. And then what I want to measure with this is going to be that V in that we're putting in. Because that's one of the curves that we want to see on our screen here. So doing that, I can plug this into our oscilloscope and we should once we turn on our wave generator get an output to the screen so i'm going to go to our wave generator go ahead and create a sine wave make sure that we can see what's going on here ah yes and as we zoom in we can actually see our wave perfect now, the other thing we want to measure is the voltage over the inductor. So I need another probe, which is going to plug into our second channel. And again, I have wires connected to it just to make our lives a little bit easier. The ground, once again, is going to go to that exact same spot. And where we're measuring this time, is just over the inductor. So that wire is going to be just on the other side of the inductor. And then we'll turn that wave on. And again, we'll have to zoom in. And we may have to play with our frequency a little bit to make it so that our curve actually shows up. And in fact, if we increase our frequency, which, as you know from circuits, increases the impedance of our inductor. That, in, that allows us to see the output curve. If our frequency is too low, then we're, we're going to have a much smaller output. So at this point, we have things set up. And we can start playing with our frequency and find those important uh, values that we're interested in. So in order to figure out the first part, we want our phase difference between these two curves to be 45 degrees. And so we go to measure, we look at the type of measurement that we want, and we don't want frequency. We want to go all the way down to the bottom to get our phase measurement. So we're going to click that, and we get a phase difference between our two curves. Now, this is going to be moving around a lot until we zoom in. So we're going to zoom in as much as we can and still get that phase difference. So if we go too far, it's going to give us errors. So this time it's telling us that there are no edges for it to work with. So we need to zoom out one, and we can get a phase difference there. If we increase our curve too much, then we start getting this clipped error. So that's another problem. So we need to stay out of that clipped error in order to get as accurate of a measurement as possible. So now we're staying pretty stable, but we're higher than the 45 degrees that we're looking for. So we need to increase our frequency. And to do that, we go to our wave gen, and we're just going to increase the frequency until this becomes 45 degrees. And we need to keep it from getting clipped. And we need to keep zooming in to get as accurate as a measurement as we can. 
So again, I'm just zooming in uh, to where it doesn't tell me any errors and it can still see the values. So what I'm looking for here, now we know that it's about 200 kilohertz, but we can probably get a better measurement by using the fine controls. And that seems a little too high. That's still a little high. Now we're still mostly above 45, so I'll try a little bit lower. Still above 45. Oh wait, I need to go the other way. So there, we're 44 sometimes, 45 sometimes. So we're probably going to be in the 204 kilohertz range. That's probably the best guess that I have. So we're going to take that frequency, that 204 kilohertz, and that's going to be our central frequency that we're going to be measuring for. Now, what we want to do with these frequencies now that we have them is we want to measure the voltage output from our inductor, so from that curve two, so the peak-to-peak -peak voltage on that inductor. Now, the way that we get that, we need to go back to measure, change the source here, because right now we have the peak-to-peak -peak for uh, source one, but we want it for source two, and then we don't want phase anymore, we want the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So if we click in there, we should get a peak-to-peak -peak voltage for source two. Now this isn't accurate because we don't have the full curve in view. So we need to zoom out to get the peak-to-peak -peak correct. And it's telling us that our peak-to-peak -peak for this frequency is right at 141, and it's kind of shifting up to 143. We might be able to get a better picture if we uh, zoom in a little bit. And now it's staying pretty steady at uh, 139 or so. Uh, the peak to peak for our other curve is right at 200 millivolts. So that's just to give you a picture of what's going on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change our frequency for our wave generator. And we need to get um, all these in multiples of that frequency. So we want a tenth of that, we want two tenths of that, we want half of that, and then double five times and 10 times this frequency right here. So we're gonna start off with a tenth, and a tenth is going to be 20.4. So we're gonna go down to 20, and then we increase to 20.4. That'll be exactly one tenth of that frequency. Then zooming out so we can actually see what's going on. Now we have our, we still have our good VN value, but this is a little small. So we'll just zoom in a little bit so we can see that better. And we're fuzzy here because that value is so small, it's actually creating a lot of noise or it's picking up a lot of noise compared to what our uh, normal value is. So this is about as good as we're gonna get. And the value that we're getting there is right at 21 millivolts. Okay, so we're gonna do this a couple more times and I'm just gonna let you pick up the values on your own. Next frequency is 40.8. There's a good peak to peak value. The next frequency should be 100.2. Mm, this should be 102. So there's your value. We already did 204. So next we're gonna double 204 and go all the way to 408. And zooming in a little bit, zooming out. And there's the value for you. And then five times will get us to 1.02 megahertz. And you can see our values there. 
And then finally, we're going to increase to 2.04 megahertz. And once again, you can see the peak to peak values. Those, so those are all the measurements for the ferrite inductor. So now we're going to do the same thing for the TDK inductor. So starting off, our goal is to get that phase difference, which we still have put up. So we're trying to get that at 45 degrees. So that's right at 40, which means that we need to decrease our value a little bit more. So we're in the range of range of 16 kilohertz, probably needs to be a little bit higher than that, um, or a little bit lower than that. 15 looks a little bit high, so we're in between 15 and 16. So we'll start playing around with those values and try to get as good of a measurement as we can. So it looks like 15.2 is kind of flipping in between 45 degrees and 46 degrees. So let's increase a little bit more. All right, and then 15.3 is flipping in between 15.4 and 15 point, or 44 and 45 degrees. So that's probably about right. So that's gonna be our frequency for the TDK inductor. Now, once we have this, we need to go back and uh, calculate the, the V out for the 10%, 20%, 50%, and so on and so forth. So to start off, we're going to go to 1.53 kilohertz. So there's 1.53. We need to zoom out and then increase our vertical zoom for the green. And then we get that value of about 22 millivolts. Next up, we double it and go to 3.06. So there's 3.06, change the vertical zoom, change the horizontal zoom. And now we have a new peak to peak voltage. Five times 1.53 is 7.65. So 7.6, 7.65 is right there. Zoom out on the green a little bit and zoom in horizontally. And there's our new peak to peak voltage. We already did our root frequency, which was 15.3. So double that, we're gonna to go to 30.6 kilohertz. Again, zoom out on the vertical and zoom in on the horizontal. And there's a pretty good measurement of our peak to peak. Five times is going to be the 7, 76.5. So there's 76 and there's 76.5. Zoom out a little bit on the green and zoom in horizontally. And we have a value. Let's make these two look the same. And then finally, our 10 times frequency is going to be 153 kilohertz. So there's 153. And again, we'll zoom in horizontally. And we have a pretty good picture of what our peak to peak voltage is. All right, and those should be all the measurements that you need in order to complete uh, lab number six.